Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Drifting with Brogue Hammer Auto House on CarX Drift Racing 2. Today's episode is a little bit different. Um, after posting some of the tuning videos that I have in the past, I had a few requests for just some tips and tricks to put those tunes to the proper use and get the most out of your driving ability. There's a few main components to controlling the cars in this game. One of the biggest being throttle control, um, which I think can sometimes be overlooked, but besides that, there's braking and or handbrake use, um, steering inputs, your settings and control layouts, um, and then also just kind of starting with the basics to know what works best for you. Um, later on in this video, I will also give some tips for chasing down cars in tandem and uh, do a little walkthrough on the controls I use as well as the control layout that works best for me. Um, let's take a look at some of these clips and I will explain why I did certain things to put the car in the places I wanted. Um, this includes, you know, higher and lower powered vehicles at multiple different tracks. So bear with me as I jump around a little bit um, and make sure to listen closely to the engine sounds as that'll help give you a best idea of the throttle inputs um, because that tends to be, I think, a major thing for me. Um, so as you can see here um, in a JZX, 90 JZX 100 I believe um, this particular corner coming up here always gives me trouble when I come through since it goes downhill I tend to have too much speed so here you can hear I let off the throttle because I know I'm going too close to the wall and I tap it and then I get right back into it so um, this is that same line with the uh, M3 um, and you can see that I'm running that kind of outer line looks good my throttle solid um, and the other thing too with the steering in accordance to your throttle is a lot of the times on these particular tracks I'm steering into the corner for a little bit randomly um, while I'm still staying on throttle. Here again I let off the throttle. It straightens up a little bit but it doesn't send me to the wall so hard that I lose my combo. Um, but you'll see you know with the steering and whatnot um, you can steer into the turn um, or you can steer towards the outside. Obviously, if you steer to the outside of the corner while you're on throttle, you're gonna bring more angle out of your car. So you'll have less angle and more speed. But if you steer into the corner um, while you're drifting on throttle, you will get more angle, but you will slow down quite a bit. So, you know, obviously there's a, a fine line there where if you just hold the steering into the turn, you're, you're gonna spin out no matter what. Um, but it's a good place to start. And the other thing, and the biggest thing that I also mentioned was handbrake usage. Um, the, I think that this matters more when you're trying to do uh, tandems or tandem tournaments, that kind of stuff, because when you use the e-brake too much, it's hard to run a really smooth line behind the person in front of you. Most of the time when I'm chasing people, although I do obviously use the handbrake, a lot of the times I try to just let off the throttle because I know that that will grip the car up a little bit and get me um, so that I don't fall back from holding the handbrake. Um, this little jump here is <laughs> at the LA block. I found that if you hit that jump, you can get over to the top and there's this like big freeway system that shockingly you can drive on. So um, the other thing here is, you know, get to the basics. Um, this, this particular shot here is showing you that um, on a couple of these, when you're just doing donuts, for example, I'm not doing any steering inputs at all. Uh, and this car is just drifting a perfect circle around here. You'll notice that I'm using the throttle to control where I want it to go. Now, if you're in a certain gear and you're maxed out, you're on the limiter, then obviously it's gonna stay kind of where it's at. You can see I switched up to fourth gear there and it brought me out a little further, um, but it just kind of depends on the vehicle too. Here's my game controls. Um, I do use the steering assistant because of the type of controls that I have. I turn the perfect line off and stuff just so it's a little easier to see the track and sometimes the perfect line kind of messes me up. But um, as we jump over to controls here, I use the steering arrows um, as well as, you know, the sensitivity you can see there, linearity, sequential transmission. I think that is a huge, huge part of drifting in this game. If you run the automatic, sometimes it shifts up into a gear you don't want it to be in and then you bog out, lose drift and a lot of that. So manual mode is better, um, but I don't use the true manual because then the clutch uh, shifting is just too much. Here's my layout so you can see I've got um, my gear shifts top left and right. Um, you can resize all these different things, put them where it seems to fit in your hands the best when you're holding your phone and stuff. 
um, steering down below. I tucked the clutch here kind of in the middle, so I don't use the clutch a ton. Maybe I should use it more, but I don't. Um, and then throttle brake and handbrake on the right side. I like that the handbrake is right above my throttle because then I can quickly switch between the two. Um, here's a little backwards entry um, that I just happened to run and get really close to those poles. I thought it was kind of cool. And then another version uh, with the 240SX just doing some donuts around here. So. I'm hoping that covered most of it. Um, I do have uh, some tandem stuff uh, here towards the end of the video as well. And I'll kind of walk you through a little bit of why I say like use less e-brake. Um, the other big tip is to make sure you're matching the type of tire that the other person is running because a lot of the times if you're on a sport tire and they're on a semi-slick, they're gonna be able to run away from you almost the entire lap and you can't even ever get to that proximity that most people are hoping to get to uh, when you're doing these tandems. So that's where you get the most multipliers when you're chasing somebody down is if you're close. This shot here, you can see I just went full throttle until I got so far out that I ended up clipping a wall. And then um, this is also another, here's where the tandem starts with the top 32 uh, chasing down a GTR. So he was on just the basic street tires. So naturally I changed the, the tires on my car to street tires to match that. You can see there's a couple spots where I fell back, but notice when I do fall back, I take angle out of the car by turning towards him or the outside of the corner so that I can catch up because you're gonna gain the most points by being right on his door. So staying way back and just having good angle, it just won't get you very far in the game. Um, here's another run where I fell back, so I'm getting angle out, staying on throttle, flying up on him, and then you can always drop back, pull a handbrake or let off throttle. Um, a lot of the times when I pull the handbrake to slow down or get off throttle to slow down, you need to steer um, basically into the turn to help you keep an angle in your drift so that um, you don't lose drift and uh, you don't straighten out and grip up because you want those tires to keep spinning so you can stay in drift and maintain the proximity that you want to maintain. So, that is the gist of it. Um, if you guys have more questions about this kind of stuff, please feel free to comment down below. Uh, I'm happy to make more videos explaining exactly what I'm doing and, and how my car is reacting in certain ways. So I'm sure I missed some stuff. I'll wait to hear from you guys and we'll see you next time.